Hello, today we're doing 10.2 notes talking about inscribed angles. So our objective students will be able to use the relationship between inscribed angles and arcs to find missing measures. So let's go ahead and start with this GeoGebra link. So we're going to click on the inscribed angle and move points B and C. Then we're going to make a conjecture. So inscribed angle, that's the one we're focusing on there. Oh, I guess we also need that central angle so we can compare what the arc is going to equal. Let's move around B and C. Move that. All right, let's go ahead and compare some of these measures. I'll go a little bit bigger. So the arc is 78.1 degrees, and the inscribed angle, so the one that goes all the way to the other edge of the circle and comes back, is 39.1. So I want you to take a second and think, how do these two numbers relate to one another? How can I get from 39.1 to 78.1, or vice versa? All right, let's take a look at another angle. Let's do that. So we have 68.4 compared to 136.9. How do you think those two numbers relate? All right, let's do something a little bit smaller. Or maybe not there. Let's do that one. So we have 17.5 and 35. All right, what I noticed between all these measurements is that from the smaller angle, if we multiply that by 2, we get the central angle, so the inscribed angle, sorry, not the smaller angle. It is a little bit smaller, but the inscribed angle is um, divided by 2 from the center, central angle. So let's go ahead and start filling this out. So inscribed angle and its arc, um, I know I kept talking about the central angle, but we do have to remember that the central angle and the arc are congruent to one another, right? So if we take a look at the inscribed angle, it's the arc is twice the size. All right, an inscribed angle of a circle has its vertex on the edge of the circle. All right, so it's not at the center anymore, it's all the way at the edge, somewhere on the edge of the circle, and the measure of an inscribed angle is equal to half of its enclosed arc. So whatever this arc is, if we divide it by 2, we will get our angle, and if we have our angle, multiply that by 2, we will get our arc. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples. So here I'm given the arc, so this arc right here is 124 degrees, so to go to the angle we need to divide by 2. So let's take 124 divided by 2, we'll get 62, so that means A equals 62 degrees. All right, let's check out the other one. So this time we have the angle, and the angle is 52 degrees. And so in order to figure out what the arc is, we're going to multiply by 2. So in this case, I'm going to take 52 and multiply that by 2. I will get 104 degrees. So that would be D. All right, so from the arc to the angle, divide by 2. Angle to the arc, multiply by 2. Let's try another one. All right, so this one, it creates this little figure here, right? So we have like this extra angle here. That would be our central angle, which we have to remember that is congruent to our arc right here. So once we find the arc, we also know the central angle. So we know the inscribed angle. So all the way to the arc, if we divide by 2, or sorry, multiply by 2, my bad, 72 times 2, I'm going to get 144 degrees for x, and remember x is congruent to y, so I'm also going to say 144 degrees equals y, because the inscribed angle and the arc are congruent to one another. All right, take a second to try 4, 5, and 6. Give a second, pause the video, then the solutions will be up. 
All right, let's take a look at four, five, and six. So with number five for y, if you left it as 117 divided by two, that would also be correct. All right, let's go ahead and try the next example. So number seven, we want to find the requested measures of circle B as shown. So let's first start with finding the measure of angle one. So we have this inscribed angle here. And we know that the arc is 150 degrees. So to go this way, we need to divide by two. So 150 divided by two, I will get 75 degrees. All right, the next we want to find AE. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So arc AE here. So we're not given too much information about this arc, but if we see here, we have a straight line, and remember a straight line is 180 degrees. Half of a circle is 180 degrees, so I can use that to help me out. I know that part of this whole arc here is 150, so to just find the remaining part, I need to do some subtraction. So 180 minus 150, that will give me my arc is 30 degrees. All right, the measure of DA, so DA we have right here. So once again, we have this arc that is 180 degrees, and part of my arc is 40, so once again, 180 minus 40, I'm going to get 140 degrees for the measure of arc DA. Now we want to do the arc DEA. So D to E to A, so all the way around. We just found DA, which is 140. And we know that the entire circle is 360. So if we take 360 and subtract the one part, we will be left with the rest of the circle. So that's going to give me 220 degrees. All right, there's also another way we could have done that. We could have done 180 plus 40. We could have split it up and done 150 plus 30 plus 40. Any way to get the measure of DEA. All right, let's go ahead and check out a couple more down here. So example eight and nine, I wanna find the value of X. So once again, we're still practicing. We have an inscribed angle and to get to the arc, we need to multiply by two. So 63 times two, I'm gonna get 126. So that means this arc here equals 126 degrees. I have a saying we have a couple different terms so we have ax minus 1 equals 126 so now I have ax equals 127 and then we if we go ahead and divide by 8 I will have x equals 15.875 if you decide to leave that as 127 over 8 that is a very acceptable answer as well all right, go ahead and try number nine. So this time there's X's in both of these. So we still have to do our multiplication. All right, and here we have it. So I multiplied the inscribed angle by two. And then once I multiply that by two, I will end up with my arc. So therefore I distributed the two, combined all my like terms, and I am left with 42 equals X. All right, our last part, angle inscribed in a semicircle. So remember, a semicircle is 180 degrees. An angle inscribed a semicircle has a measure of 180 degrees. So that means we have a 90 degree angle here. And so that makes sense if we do 90 times two, right? 90 times two, we get 180. So if we see that we have this semicircle, so that just means the two endpoints of my angle, if they're connected, create a straight line, we know that the arc has to be 180 degrees. And we also know that this will always have to be 90 degrees right there, because if we know that's 180, 180 divided by two is 90, 90 times two is 180, so it all comes together nicely. And 
if you notice, we also have a right triangle, so we can use that to help us solve for some problems as well. All right, let's go ahead and start with number 10. So we want to find each variable. So the first thing is I see my um, diameter. And in my diameter, I know that my arc is 180, which means my inscribed angle all the way over here, x equals 90 degrees. All right, and then of course to find y, remember all the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So 180 minus 90, which is my x, is 90. And then minus my 31 will give me, let's move it up here, 59, which will be my y. All right, so all I did was subtract from 180 to find that final angle. All right, let's take a look at 11. We have a few different things to solve here. Let's go ahead and start with the uh, triangle that we have created. So we have our diameter, which means angle A has to be 90 degrees. So A equals 90 degrees. So to find D, I'm going to take 180 minus 90 minus 55. So that's going to give me 35 degrees. So D equals 35. I'm going to go ahead and fill these in as well, just because we are going to use that to find all of our different arcs. So the first thing I see is that angle, or arc B, is with that se semicircle, so the diameter. So B equals 180 degrees. All right, and then for C and E, we have other inscribed angles, so 55 degrees would go that way, and 35 degrees would go towards the E. So all we need to do here is multiply by 2 to get where we need. So 55 times 2, we will end up with 110 degrees, and so that's our C. And then our other angle is 35. Let's go ahead and multiply that one by 2. I'm going to go ahead and get 70 degrees, which that is my E. Right, so 35 is opposite of that E there. Okay, let's take a look at number 12. So I want you guys to try number 12. Um, if you are looking at your notes right now, um, this image got printed funny. So this image should be here, and we are finding all these different parts of the circle, um, the arcs and the angles. So go ahead and take a second to draw it out and then find your angles and arcs. All right, so here's number 12. I started with X because I noticed we have that semicircle. I found inside my triangle, and then I was able to just multiply by 2 to find my arcs. All right, let's go ahead and try a few more examples. So let's start with 13 here. So find each variable given that PQ is the diameter. So remember, we do have this right triangle. So we have a right triangle. We are going to use a Pythagorean triple here. So we have a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So D equals 5. And remember, if you could not remember that Pythagorean triple, we could do 3 squared plus 4 squared equals D squared to find the diameter. All right, let's take a look at 14. So this one is going to be a reminder of a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So remember, our ratios is 1, 1, 1 root 2. So since we know this 9 from 1 to 9, we are going to multiply by 9, which means I have to do the same thing for both of my other sides, which means x equals 9 and y equals 9 root 2. All right, let's go ahead and try 15. So 15, we have a 30, 60, 90. So our 90 is there. 30, 60, 90. Let's talk about the ratios. The 1 is going to be across from the 30. 2 is always the hypotenuse, and so that leaves across from the 60 is 1 root 3. So from 1 to 5, I'm multiplying by 5, which means I have to do the same thing for all the other sides which means x equals 5 root 3, and y equals 10. 
All right, and then 16, our last one. Once again, we have another Pythagorean triple. So we have 8, 15, 17. So D equals 17. And remember with those Pythagorean triples, if you're ever like, I'm not quite sure which what the Pythagorean triple is, take the two legs, square them, and whatever the hypotenuse is, which in this case happens to be our variable, also square that. All right, and that is the end of 10.2. If you have any further questions, please be sure to ask your teacher and rewatch the video as needed. Have a wonderful day.